Hey, it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm. And today I'm going to teach you how to make a snowman felted that does not fall over. So you don't need to put anything on the base. It has a very simple armature and you'll be amazed. So today it's all about winter and holidays. And I'm going to teach you how to make a snowman, which sounds like a pretty basic thing. Oh yeah. And look, I'm having whipped cream and sprinkles in my coffee. Yes, it's really good. Okay, so the thing about making snowmen is you go, oh, it's three balls. This is going to be really easy. It's not. They never stand up. And I was talking to my friend Janice about this. And so I'm like, I am going to make an armature that makes these guys stand up. And oh my gosh, I did. And I can't believe how good they stand up. And they're very light. They don't have to be. They're squishy. They don't have to be felted hard, but they stand up. doesn't matter what size you make them. Bigger, littler. And we're going to do a little one today. Um, they stand up. So they won't fall over. They roly-poly. And when you see how we do this, you're going to go, no way. Because that's what we said. So this one um, that you're looking at, she has earmuffs and a, and a scarf. And it's made out of just dyed locks that I poked on. Need to felt it on. She's got a Fimo nose. Remember, I told you I take a whole pack of orange Fimo clay and sit and make noses and then I bake them all at once. So then I have a whole baggie. I have a whole baggie of noses that I can pick from. Some bells. This is just some snow paper snowflakes that I found at a giant craft store in the Christmas section. But they made a nice little garland. So let me get you started and I'll go through what you need. For the outer coat, you're going to need snow color which or white. You know, I suppose you could do them out of core wool. I just like them white, white. Um, and this is snow. It's available in my shop. It's a DHG sliver. Works really well. You're going to need, for the size I do today, you're going to need 20 inches of 18 gauge wire. It does not have to be heavy duty which that's the other thing that's crazy. Um, sticks, random sticks from your backyard for arms. I have two kinds of coral wool, one that I can wrap with, and then um, uh, a rough, the rougher one for the guts. And some black for their eyeballs and their mouth. And then um, sometimes I do blush, sometimes I actually do a little bit of pink and I'll decide what I'm going to do. Then I have some bells that we'll put on for the um, just finishing touches. Remember, it's all about the details. So you have this 20 inch piece of wire and you're going to make a circle. Overlap it about a half an inch on each side and twist it around itself. And you see how easy this is? You're going to go say, what? So. Remember, snowmen have a small ball, bigger one, and a bigger one. Except when we built them when I was kids, sometimes they would all end up the same size. Um, growing up in Michigan, we could build snowmen. So I always kind of start with the head. And I'm just going to twist a piece for the head. Okay, so there's where my head's going to be. All right, so now you go, okay, I got this left and the middle ball needs to be smaller than the bottom ball. Just kind of work it out. It's This isn't a exact science. All this armature does is make this snowman stand up. It's the cra craziest thing. It just gives it enough structure. You can see I'm squeezing them together. So we want them to look like this. So see, this ball is just a little bit bigger than this ball. So you have your head, your body, and the bottom piece. Does not matter where this ends up. It does not matter where this join ends up at all. So the next thing you're going to do, if you have some roving type core, we're going to wrap our frame. I mean, it can't get any simpler than this. So, take it, put it in, 
Snowmen are good because they can, I like snowmen out because you can keep them out until January, February. Well, until winter is over. And I just start some rep in the bottom piece first to secure it a little bit in the middle around your wire. And I know you're thinking, how on earth is this going to work? And I actually don't know why it works. It just does. We just want to stab. I'm using the pen tool. In my pen tool today, I have one 38 star spiral and one 38. Why? Because I bent one of my other 38 star spirals and that's all I could grab was a 38 star. I split that down just a little bit because I wanted to. You don't have to. So on this middle part, let's do a figure eight. We're going to go or crisscross him. So we're going down over there. We're going down over here. Go across. And you can see I'm not pulling really tight. If you pull really tight, you're gonna lose your shape. Don't don't pull tight at first. Basically, all we're really doing here is getting the wire mm -hmm. covered because the next step is kind of crazy. Same thing on the head. Let's kind of if you can kind of do a little crisscross because we're just. Like I said, covering the wire, you might end up having to do something like this at the top. Let's just stab it on. This one will go pretty fast because he's little. The bigger you get, the more core wool it takes. Just like pumpkins. You know, I give you my quick, easy easy little solution for tying pumpkins with twine. Hopefully you can we'll get this uploaded and it'll be a little Thanksgiving project you can do with your kids. Okay, so now I'm going to my rougher core wool. And this can be pieces. It does not have to be big. I'm going to roll some little pillows. Little pillows. And I'm going to stab one uh, right inside of his head here. Give him some brains. I'm staying inside the wire. Don't hit that wire with your needle. It's how you break your needles. And let's make a little pillow for this middle section. Notice I didn't stab this, this, the wrapping a lot. Like I said, it was just covering the wires and it's a vehicle to attach this core wool to. But you can see I'm starting to get half a snowman shape. Bottom piece, you're gonna need a little bit more than you had for the middle piece because it's supposed to be a bigger ball. Just kind of test it out. So, fold it up. And I'm just attaching on the edges. Let's turn this. So you know we're going to go, we're going to flip him over. And it gets a little rocky that way. So, you can see we have half balls. So now we're going to flip them over. We're going to start again. Do This looks like enough for the middle. You know, you don't have to work top to bottom like I did. Oh, well, maybe I can do his head. All right. Let's attach this to his head. Now, so this is a little bit harder because you have those, you're not flat on your pad anymore. What is your, I'm going to ask you guys a question and I want to hear the answers. What is your favorite Thanksgiving food? 
What is your favorite Thanksgiving food? Mine? All of it. No. <laughs> I don't really have a favorite. Um, I think the turkey is my favorite. I like turkey. You know, my friend is only cooking a turkey breast and it's like, what? That is sacrilege because there's no dark meat. The dark meat is the best. Cannon's making faces over here. He doesn't like the dark meat, apparently. That's the best part. Thanksgiving's going to be weird this year. We were going to have a giant gathering and now we're not. So you can see I'm just attaching. You want to make sure you're getting, especially up here at the head, getting all the way around the ball or the half ball. You can see we're getting ball shaped and you're wondering how are we going to smooth that out? Well, I'm going to show you. So now we're going to, you need that bigger piece for the bottom ball. And that was not enough that I put on this. So I'm going to have to add to it. I just rolled up a piece. I can tell it's, you want to make sure that you're putting the same amount on both sides. If you want a svelte snowman, don't put as much, but I like them nice and round. So I'm going to add to the side two pieces. So remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. Going straight in, straight out. Doesn't matter what angle you're at with your needle, as long as you're going straight in, straight out. And let your needle do the work when you're working on a big project like this. So that actually wrapped around a little bit. I'm gonna get that in here. So now you can see. I am mostly the same size. This is not quite attached. It's not really gonna matter if it's totally attached. You'll see why in a second. So now we're gonna go back to our roving form core wool. And we're gonna wrap him like a mummy. So I got a little bit on his head. And this will smooth him out. At first, he's going to look kind of square. You can see square. We'll fix that in a minute. And we're going to take another piece. Probably going to take two times around the middle, three times around the bottom. You can see what this is doing. It's just solidifying all our pieces. It's like glue. Again, you don't have to wrap super tight. We're going to poke the top so much that it's going to come together. Now, I don't like these pieces to get folded. I like to just wrap them on and let them work their way in. When you get folded pieces, that gives you lumps. So I'm attaching this at his neck. See, we have a little, I got the middle ball here. And you thought the snowman was going to be super little, didn't you, by the size of that frame? But you can see it's already standing up because of that little tiny bit of armature we put in it. Okay, and then bottom's going to take a bit more. Come around, cross over. No, I didn't have enough. 
Should have taken a couple more inches. Let's tack that down. And remember, there is wires in here. So if you're stabbing, you're stabbing carefully. I think that's how I bent my needle that I had to take out of here. Getting the wire. So I have one little spot here that's left. I'm just going to cover this because we're going to cover it again with white. Nope, I have more than one spot. All right, that is covered. Notice I'm not worrying about the bottom yet. We will make sure the bottom is flat, but he stands. If you can see, he stands. It's pretty crazy how he stands up. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to sit here and I'm going to felt this up and down and around until it's nice and smooth. It's probably going to take me, because I'm picky, a good 20 minutes. Remember, it's not a race, so just take your time and get, get all your balls nice and smooth and work them around, you know, so that they're not square here. So that you have not three nice balls. You don't have to really worry about them coming apart because we have the armature in there. So get get poking and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've been poking on the scat for a bit. Poking and talking, poking and talking. Um, and you, so see, I just got it. All this core will kind of smooth because when we put the white on, it'll end up being poked more and get a little bit solid, but it's still super squishy, super squishy. So now I wanna work the bottom just a little bit because this is kind of a mess down here. So you, you don't wanna overwork it, but you want it flat. You just want this nice and flat and you can add but you can see it's going to stand up. Test it so your guy's not leaning. If you know if you have lumpies down here, it will lean. But it should stand pretty straight. So we can just cover it with a little piece of this core. Just to make it pretty. You, know, you want your projects to be finished all the way around. Take the extra time. Sometimes, you know, you're in a hurry. I'm speaking from experience. You're in a hurry and just want to get it done. And you, know, you leave them a little fuzzy. You don't want to do mm -hmm. that. You want to make sure your projects are finished. The more finished your item is, the more people will want them. Especially, these are a great craft bazaar item. A great one. I know a lot of you are are making stuff to sell at the craft bazaars right now. People love felties. People love felties because not a lot of people do them. So see, all nice and standing up. All right, so now what we're gonna do more boring stuff. We're gonna cover him with white. All right, core wool. We've talked about this before. When you're covering core wool with white. Sometimes it gets hard to tell if you've covered all the spots. If you have a question about it, take it outside. Um, I take them outside just to see if I missed a spot here or there. Because once you get towards the end, it gets, it gets hard to see if you've covered all of it with white. So use thin layers, but not so thin that your core wool shows through. And now as you do this, I want you to really work on finishing it. I mean, you can do one ball at a time, but we're going to just make it nice and smooth. And again, I'm working in the round. So 
This is a ball. I want a ball shape. It's skinnier down here, skinnier up here, fat in the middle, but you want to work around. You guys, if you have a special project that you're thinking about making and you're not quite sure, message me. Maybe I can make a tutorial out of it. I'm always looking for ideas to keep you guys inspired. And make sure you're posting what you make on the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon Fiber Art Group because that inspires everybody. We want to keep felting. Everybody keep felting. You never know what's going to inspire somebody to make something. You see, I'm just adding a little bit at a time, working it around, trying to make sure I cover every bit of this core wool with white. If you want to put a whole bunch on and then use like your multi tool with the seven, five to seven needles in it. You can always do that. That makes it super smooth. Sometimes I will do that. Maintain the small space where his neck is. So for this size snowman, I think it will just take a quarter ounce of the white snow. I think I have a plan for this guy. I've got this wooden sled and I'm going to put three on there. A mom, a dad, and a kid like they're riding a toboggan. It'll be pretty fun. The other question I have for all y'all today, because I hope a whole bunch of people are watching this, is do you want to see more multimedia felting projects? Because I do a lot of stuff where I'll sew part of it on my sewing machine, and then I will felt on top of it. Why? Because it goes faster, because <laughs> I like to do things fast. Work smarter, not harder. It's still felted. It's just that the base is wool, stuffed with wool. It just goes faster than felting at all. So oftentimes I'm not a purist. I'm a multimedia fiber artist. So see how there's this spot right here. I can kind of see that it's core wool, but not really. I will end up having to take him outside. So now what I'm going to do is just keep working this, covering this. It's going to take me another 20 minutes, but I really want you to work this a lot until it's nice and smooth. Now remember, when I say smooth, it doesn't mean to be totally flat because when you roll snowballs, think about when you were a kid and you rolled your snowballs, they were not perfectly round. Sometimes they're lumpy. Sometimes they have rocks in them. Sometimes they have yellow spots. <laughs> you have a dog. <laughs> but we're just going to keep felting. It's going to take me probably another 20 minutes to get him all covered. Then we'll come back and finish him up. All right. So I've been poking on him for about 20 minutes. You can see I've got him nice and smooth. And this was a quarter ounce of white on this size of snowman. I have a couple spots I'm going to have to touch up. Down here, I can see them. So it'll take a little bit more than a quarter of an ounce. But you can see I worked him round here at the bottom. 
all the way around so it still maintains his ball shape and it's more ovals and I worked him all the way here and then I work along I don't worry so much about the neck one but I like this to be nice and smooth and look like two balls sitting on top of each other so I just work in here get this all tucked in it'll look like it's not connected but he still stands up as you can see now remember this is the size frame we started with this little guy and he comes out this big so if you're thinking about making a big one don't go up too much bigger um because they get much bigger than their frame but it still lets them stand up and i don't know why but it works so let's do a little face and arm thing so feel for your wires so my wires are actually running this way right now so i'm going to turn him a quarter so because i don't want to hit, hit wires when i'm putting a face on okay. at all so we're going to take the black and remember less is more when you're doing eyeballs and things and I'm going to make two little balls and I'm just going to put it up here and I'm going to poke them in take your needle and drag it around it'll catch all those black fibers and I'm going to stickler for the I don't like stray black fibers. So I have them two little eyeballs. Now I'm going to give him a smile. You know, you can make dots if you want. Don't go too low because you're going to put a scarf on him. So I poke, I poke a smile before I take some fibers. doesn't take a lot remember you can always add if you get too much it looks sloppy and we don't want it to look sloppy so let's start poking it in don't go hog wild and poke it super deep because then it'll disappear and again we want to catch all of our stray fibers I can see I have some up here. I'm looking at a different angle. There's one. You can always clip them off. Take your time. So now we got to pick a nose. I always pick my noses last. I got all these noses in here. That's too big. I need some medium-sized noses. That one will work. This will work. So now we have a nose. I've, I've got, um, I did add some quick hold, um, this E2000 quick hold. It holds pretty good. And then I take my scissors. You're probably going, what kind of scissors are these? These are applique scissors, but they're nice and sharp. So I just grabbed them and I made a little X and see if you can fit your nose in there. Yeah, you can get your nose in there. Make a spot for your nose. Before I put my glue in, I want to make sure that that's not going to be all cattywampus. Okay, so we got it. That's where his nose is going to go. Now he's going to have his buttons which are bells i if you, especially if you're selling these at a craft bazaar poke a spot for your bell don't just glue them on because you know these things get put away for christmas they get put in a box they get jostled around you don't want your bells coming off in storage So I have four bells. I'm going to poke four spots. So that's where our bells are going to go. And I'm not gluing them yet because I'm going to glue the arm. I'm going to glue everything at once. All right. 
So then, there, you gotta find where your wire is. Remember, ours was over there. So I'm gonna, I don't cut directly on the side. Think about when you put your arms in your snowman. You're not directly to the side. And I actually cut in fairly, fairly deep. Okay, and then I have, go out in your yard, find some sticks. Got these two sticks here. And I'm just using my wire cutters. I like this, the ones that look like hands. I'm pretty picky when I'm out harvesting sticks. And then I'm going to cut that a little shorter. All right, so now we know this one's going to go here. And this one's going to go over here. I like to test them to see how they're going to do. So that's how they're going to do. So now we're going to do a little gluing. I'm going to start with his nose. Because the thing about E6000, it just goops out. So be careful because you don't want too much extra. You can use a hot glue gun too. Got that in there. And we'll put on his bells. I'm going to fill all the four holes in at the same time. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm gooping out the top. Making sure I'm built, putting my bells in the right way. I have no, been known to put them on upside down before. <laughs> the thing about this quick hold glue is it's stinky. All right, going in the hole. Let's see, one fell out already. Going in the hole with a bunch. Squeezed it, and then I'm going to put the top back on so it doesn't go all, all over my felting pad. Quick hold, kind of. I like their arms to go up. So you can put them however you want them. This is where it gets subjective. So, there we have our little snowman. And I'm going to go pick out... Oh, wait. i got to put his cheeks on. Let's put his cheeks on. I have a little bit of pink here. We'll poke his cheeks on. You can use blush, but when you get something this big... Just poke a light color. This is um, Hollyhock by DHG. I like this color for cheeks. I like this color for faces. So we're just putting on a little bit. And then I am going to come back. I think we'll put got to get some locks. I'll go get some locks and we will put on um, some earmuffs. I will show you how to make earmuffs because I don't think we did that yet. I went and got some freshly dyed chili pepper. If you're on the group, you probably saw the picture of my tree and then I dyed a whole bunch of blue face locks. So I'm going to use this little piece that was all stuck together for his scarf. And I just added these to my shop. So there's a lot of these in there. I think there's eight packs only. I can always dye some more. But I'm just going to wrap this little bit of locks around them. So you don't always have to use roving. Um, I love the texture. Because it looks like a knitted scarf when we're done. Look at that. A piece of my farm. Then we're just going to stab these on. Be careful not to stab where that wet glue is because <laughs> that will really mess up your needles. All right. So he's got on his little scarf. Cannon voted for earmuffs. So I have this little piece of red wire skewer. I'm going to leave about an inch and a half to go into his head and I'm just wrapping it around the skewer. I'm guessing about that much, about, I'm gonna cut it off on that side so that they're the same, slide it off. All right, so I have 
earmuff wires right there. And now I'm glad I have a skewer. So, oh, I probably left too much wire. Hi, Rip. Rip's down here. It must be almost three o'clock, huh, Cannon? Rip, Rip has, has decided I would move the camera and show you. He says, it's time for me to eat, Mom. He always does this about this time. So then I'm going to take my skewer and make a hole in his brain. <laughs> it sticks this wire in this side. And then I'm going to take my skewer, make a hole in this side of his brain. Stick this wire in. I don't think we did earmuff before, Cannon. All right, so now we have wire in there. And now I'm going to take some of this, more of these chili pepper locks, poke them on its head. And the an earmuff shape. Should hold the wire in. You can always stick the wire in a little bit of glue. <laughs> now he's talking to me. He has one little side. Now the box elder tree in my backyard was this color. It was amazing. Now it's this color all on the ground. <laughs> And my husband has a big job to clean up. Raking and I don't get along. It's my neck like it is. So you can make these earmuffs as poofy or as flat as you want. They're kind of fun when they're poofy. Notice that there's another piece of my farm. Little pieces of straw. They just fall right out. I washed another fleece this weekend that's so pretty. So pretty. It's going to be perfect for Santa beards or whatever. Gnome beards. It's long. It's a yearling or a, a lamb fleece, so it's beautiful, beautiful white. Now I'm being picky over here just to add a little bit more. I like that red in, in these chili peppers in this light color. Just to get them poofed out. This red craft wire right here is available in some of the bigger hobby stores right now in the Christmas stuff. So if you're out and about, we're looking for the red and green wire. It's time to build your stash up for next year. Man, I think I want a little bit more on this side. A little bit more locks. Let's do some yellow. Some yellow stuff right here. I just want it to look like a really nice scarf. And make sure these look like they're not sinking into his head. They're on the outside of his head. Like earmuffs. Because, you know, snowmen have ears. Mm. Just form them into a nice little muff. And there we have it. One little snowman that stands up. He will stand up without having to put any wood or anything on his face because of that armature. It's pretty cool. Other thing you could do is I found this in some Christmas stuff. This little sparkly hat. This guy has a hat, some locks. It's pretty simple. I hope to see you guys posting these on the group, on the group. So go in there. We want to see. Thanks for joining me and making these cute little snowmen. I can't wait to see you post them on the Langate Farm group. And make sure you click like on our videos and subscribe because it really helps us out. And I just want to say happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>